Hey everyone, this is the third video for my main DPS Ningguan series. This time I'll go through a more in-depth guide on the Ningguan calculator that I referenced in my previous videos. Hopefully this explanation gives you a better idea on how it works and its potential usage near the end game. Genshin Impact at its core is a gacha game. As with all other gacha games, there is generally an exponential growth in terms of resource required versus desired output. In this scenario, we are focused on Ningguan's damage potential. When you scroll through any character forum or streamer chat box, there are always people asking, is X better than Y for this character? The short answer is, it depends. There are many variables that need to be taken into account in order to calculate her damage potential. Things like character, weapon, and talent levels are more controllable factors, whereas overall stats are entirely based on artifact drops, and then there is personal skill level in terms of attack timing and overall playstyle. This tool takes the controllable variables and determines the potential damage output with various artifact sets and weapon combinations. At a basic usage, you can just enter in your variables and look up which weapon or artifact set option gives you the most damage. However, if you want to play Ningguan as main DPS, odds are you want to invest further in her. As mentioned before, this investment generally gets exponentially more expensive, thus you want to invest wisely. If you are using the tool, do make an offline copy for optimal usage. There are many damage calculation spreadsheets out there and the majority of them are calculating one snapshot of damage instance or simply do not calculate the damage all the way including resistance reduction. These can skew the results sometimes since we are doing a series of actions in a typical combo for any given character, and certain skills are just contributing more to your overall damage than others. This tool was designed for main DPS Ningguan that's level 70 and above, as there isn't too much to min-max before then. With Ningguan being Geo Element, she doesn't get any extra damage from elemental reactions like other characters, so pretty much whatever she outputs is the damage you're working with in the end. I will briefly go through the tool's interface and will elaborate on certain areas as needed. If you have further questions about certain parts of the tool in the end, feel free to leave a comment below. To start with the tool, just select your Ningguan's level. The plus sign in the drop-down list indicates ascension status. Plus 70 means you've just ascended beyond level 70 out of 70, and is sitting at level 70 out of 80. At level 70, you unlock the ascension talent of 12% geo damage, increased from passing through jade screens. I assume you do pass through your jade screens to sustain this bonus, thus I've lumped this into the overall geo damage percentage. For weapons, just select the weapon level and refinements. Again, plus sign indicates ascension status. The refinement levels do control all 5 star and 4 star weapons respectively. If you want to compare R2 Witsif to R1 Solar Pearl, just run it twice and jot down the damage numbers in between. For artifacts, I've only included common sets that are worth comparing, so just select the set you want. As for talent and constellation levels, pick the respective levels that you're currently running with. Do note that you have to go 3 levels higher for Star Shatter and Jade Screen if you're at C3 and C5 respectively. Under Test Settings, select the appropriate attack sequence. Ningguan's attack rotation is fairly straightforward, and the only change is when you get a Jade Screen reset from C2. I've preset C0, C2, and C6 as these are the common skill rotations for most users. For Constellation 0, you're running with the most basic combo. You start with a normal attack, followed by a Jade Screen, then Star Shatter, and then Charge with 1 Star Jade, and then Normal Normal Charge until skill is up again. For Constellation 2, you have access to the Jade Screen reset, so now you're adding a second Jade Screen after your first burst. So your sequence looks like Normal Skill Burst, Skill Charge, and then Normal Normal Charge until skill is up again. For C6, it is exactly the same as C2, but the charge after Star Shatter gains 7 Star Jace for free, so you're just burning that off before you do your normal normal charge. All of the attack combos I've set takes approximately 29 seconds to execute the entire sequence, which includes 2 rounds of Jade Screens and Star Shatters with fillers in between. It is assumed you have enough energy for Star Shatter upon cooldown. If you are C3 and above, you are basically just running the C2 sequence with some level adjustments to your talents. 
Instead of normal normal charge, some may prefer to just normal charge for more damage. It is true you, that your charge attack doesn't cost stamina if you have a star jade available, but do note you don't actually gain the star jade until your normal attacks make contact with the enemy. Hence, this depends on your travel distance between yourself and the target. Number of target is important as some artifact sets and weapons will shift in the damage ranking depending on this variable. Weapons such as the Eye of Perception will perform better than Solar Pearl if there is more than one enemy, since its proc can bounce off multiple enemies. Type and level of targets are just for damage reduction calculation purposes. You may have some defense reduction depending on your team setup, but this will most likely be zero. It does benefit certain weapons with procs, as those do physical damage. This is true even for Frost Barrier's Icicle Drop. For buffs, the tool assumes you start Ningguan's attack rotation with the buff activated for the duration set. If you're running Bennett, put in your base attack, which is the white number under your character stat summary. I just want to emphasize this since I've seen people put in 2000 attack in this slot, which is impossible. His ultimate scales off base attack only and not his total attack. If you're running Bennett and Dragon Slayer, I recommend changing his buff duration to 10 seconds from 12, as you will be losing a couple seconds switching in between characters. The buff calculation currently does not take into consideration of switching back to support to recast the buff on cooldown. I might look into adding this feature for future updates, but it is a bit more complicated and a little bit difficult to incorporate multiple instances of buffs and character switches. There are a couple important notes for the weapon comparisons. Weapons such as the Skyward Atlas, Blackcliff Agate, and Mappa Mare have multiple hits and stacks for their effects, so pick whichever one you think you can sustain based on your own personal skill level. Lost Prayer at maximum stacks is generally not relevant unless you're doing solo abyss with Ningguan or playing in co-op mode. For my analysis, I only use the normal Lost Prayer values. For the Blackcliff Agate, I've set it such that the attack percent doesn't kick in until after your first Star Shatter, as it is unlikely you can kill anything with just one normal attack and one J screen in the later Abyss floors. For the damage calculation, I use the formulas from Kachain Main's Theory Crafting Library. I do recommend going through some of their guides for a basic understanding of how damage is calculated and how damage reduction works if you want to try min-maxing yourself. One important part of these comparisons is balancing the artifact substats for a fair comparison. In general, I start with an attack percent stance, a geo percent goblet, and crit rate or crit damage headpiece depending on the weapon substat. I then apply 25 rows of offensive substats for the calculations, prioritizing 65% crit rate, 130% crit damage, and then the rest into attack percent for all weapons. Rolling 25 times into offensive substat is around average level at the current state of the game. I plan to make this more of a sliding scale in the future updates, ranging from garbage rolls to god rolls. For a basic use of this tool, just input your Ningguan and test environment variables and look for the highest damage on the right. For those who are interested in endgame min-maxing, you can take the damage results and do some number comparisons on the side. For the following examples, I'm using a C2 Ningguan with Weapon Refinement Rank 1 and Talent Level 6, 6, and 6 on a single level 80 target. Let's say you have a Ningguan at level 70 with a level 70 weapon and we will treat this as your base setup. You're deciding if it is worth investing in her further and to answer that you need to know how much more damage she will gain as you level her up. The graph on screen shows your percent damage increase compared to the base damage as you raise Ningguan and her weapon level. Orange is the average value for 5 star, and purple is the average values for 4 star. As you can see, you get approximately 9% increase in overall damage after ascending to 70 out of 80 and 80 out of 90. On the other hand, leveling fully to 80 out of 80 and 90 out of 90 nets you an approximate 14% increase. If you're limited in resources and still want to get the maximum value, we can compare the percent damage increase from only raising your Ningguan's level versus only raising the weapon level. On the screen, we keep the weapon level constant at level 70 while increasing Ningguan's level to max 90. We can see that raising Ningguan's level results in a fairly linear increase in percent damage. Doing so will net you an approximate 5% increase at each stage and around a 20% increase at max level 90. 
Looking at the other way around, we keep Ningguan's level constant at level 70 while increasing her weapon level to 90. You can see the damage increase isn't as linear. You gain approximately 7% damage for getting a weapon to 80 out of 80 and 90 out of 90, whereas only a 4% increase through Ascension alone. Interestingly, with 5 star weapons, you gain around 24% at max level 90. Now farming for character ascension materials and experience tomes costs resin, whereas weapons upgrade crystals do not. So the only thing worth comparing here is the gold cost. If you are low on gold and have to choose between ascending a character versus ascending the weapon, you can use this info to prioritize your upgrades. From talents onwards, I'll be using a level 80 Ningguang with level 80 weapon as an example. Bear in mind you will need to reach a certain ascension level in order to increase talents beyond a certain threshold. In this example, I'm holding everything constant and just increasing talent levels for comparison's sake. With talent levels, you're gated by crowns and weekly boss drops for the higher levels. As an example, I'm currently running a C3 Ningguang with Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds, both at level 90. With my talent levels at 8, 8, and 11, having an extra 3 levels to Star Shatter because I'm C3, my potential damage is around 600k. I have been sitting at 1 Spirit Locket of Boreas for a, probably about a month, and just recently got one more last week. Now the decision is which talent do I level up in order to get the best value out of this annoying random drop. Playing around with the tool, it makes the most sense to level up my normal attacks since it has the highest increase to my overall damage. If you are playing Ningguan as a burst support, this will be different for you since you spend a lot less time doing normal attacks. I want to emphasize that previous comparisons revolve mainly around resin resources, which isn't too big of a deal if you don't min-max as it basically just translates to time. When it comes to weapon refinements, it all boils down to gacha mechanics. You're going to ask the question, is it worth X amount of money to pull on this weapon banner? What people don't often realize is, is you aren't paying to get an item. You are paying for a chance to gamble at getting an item. This isn't pay to win, but more like pay to gamble especially on the weapon banner where the pity is still 50-50 at best. On screen is the average increase in overall damage with increasing refinement levels for 5 star and 4 star weapons. Note that these are averages and the percent increase may vary for your particular weapon of interest. In general, I don't recommend the weapon banner because the increase in damage is simply not worth the money and you can clear all current endgame content with refinement 1 weapon alone. With Constellation, this is another big cost factor in terms of real life money. On screen, you can see the overall damage increase with respect to the Constellation increase. From C0 to C1, you gain the AoE effect on your normal attacks. Since this is a single target example, hence there is no difference here. From C1 to C2, you gain the Jade screen reset, changing up your attack sequence a little bit and netting you around a 4% damage increase. From C2 to C3, you gain 3 extra Star Shatter levels, a decent 8% jump in damage. From C3 to C4, you gain some defensive talent that doesn't do anything. And then from C4 to C5, you gain 3 extra Jade Screen levels, this time it is only a 3.5% increase. Lastly, from C5 to C6, you get a huge 10.5% boost in damage from the free 7 Star Jades. If you're attacking more than one target, then C1 and C5 will have a slightly bigger impact since both of these are AoE effects. Unlike Child, Klee, or the upcoming Shao, there isn't too much change to Ningguan's playstyle or attack sequence with the higher constellation levels. You are straight up paying for more damage in this case. Note you do not need max refined weapons or constellations to one-shot the Valwen. Go check out my Ningguan solo without fruit or buff one-shot video if you want. Also, one-shotting it doesn't make the week long cooldown any shorter. Again, you have to ask yourself if this damage increase is worth the gacha money. Just because you're guaranteed a 4 star pity every 10 pull, there is still a small chance you won't get any Ningguangs. I hope this video was helpful and helps you think about resource management a little bit more. I recommend playing around with the calculator and try some min-maxing on your own. Let me know in the comments below if you have any feedback on it. You can find the link for the calculator in the description below or under Ningguan spreadsheet in the Ninggang Discord server. Again, please make an offline copy for optimal use. I'm not the best with Google Sheets, so there might still be some protection errors. 
I do check the spreadsheets every so often and fix any minor bugs throughout the week. Any feedback on this video or questions you want answered are welcome as well. I'm thinking of creating one for the upcoming Xiao as he works in a similar main DPS role without a variety of elemental reactions as well. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time. Cheers!